Hello, friends. What a lucky week. You're going to get Stephanie and Taylor twice this week. That is if the internet stays up, which we kind of hope it doesn't because that means that mm, things are happening. So we decided to do a little impromptu episode. We're not going to be answering the questions today. We're going to do that tomorrow when we film because there have been some confusing and conflicting um, theories put out there about um, themes that we realize are very, very um, powerful right now in this timeline shift that's happening. And that, of course, the biggest theme is that of the twin flame. We've spoken about this a lot on other episodes, and this is definitely coming up in the Magdalene series that I have been doing on my channel. And um, we wanted to talk about that, right, ladies? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So um, there is uh, this symposium that Plato, Plato wrote, Plato's Symposium, where he does discuss this concept of twin flames, soulmates, soul family, what all this means, these different categories of the interpersonal relationships that we have with different souls. And we know that soulmates are different from twin flames. More specifically, in my opinion, and from my study in philosophy, and I obviously philosophy is something that I enjoy, and it's something that I do professionally, actually, with uh, yoga, I have to study a lot of philosophy. What, there is a theory going around that your twin flame is your higher self. That is not true, according to all the philosophy that I have studied throughout the years. Your higher self is an aspect of you. And as Taylor has said, when you, I love it so eloquently, even though you and your twin share a soul that splits, you are still whole within yourself, even with that split soul. And that higher self is an aspect of you and your wholeness. It's not your twin flame. So again, a twin flame, certain souls decide if it's good for them to actually split into two bodies. Yeah. Okay. But they are the same soul. I know that sounds confusing because what? <laughs> That's welcome to, welcome to the great awakening, right? This shit's bad. This is bash and crazy, right? But yes. So your twin flame is your soul, but in a different avatar. Do y'all want to explain further? I guess like the only thing I was just going to add to that, because you, you did wonderfully, obviously. The other thing too, is we don't know everything. We don't claim to know everything, but this is definitely something that like we've realized there are higher self, higher aspects to the twin flame too. Mm -hmm. So this person that is incarnated, there's also a higher aspect of them. And I think that communication coming online to amplifying that energy. The other thing I was going to say too, is we're also coming into the soul fragments idea that there's multiple aspects of us experiencing. And I'd like to just say, like, I think it's true. Some people's aren't having this experience. I think it's true. Some people might have a soulmate on a ship. I think that's true. But I think there's also been this really distorted energy of trying to keep these unions apart because one, these unions are extremely powerful. And like some of the information that was coming forward was like, they would keep anything, do anything to keep these unions apart. Right. So we're starting to see the importance of this. And this is a topic that we're bringing up because it's like, another thing they wanted to keep away from us, another hidden, hidden story and all the stories of all the stories. And we're still like, I, I don't know, I just had a vision of like digging, like still digging for the gems and trying to figure it all out. But like, that's the whole point is we're all collecting pieces of this information too. I don't know. But yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm with you 100%. I think they tried to hide it. And there's a reason for that because of the power behind it, right? And they're trying to confuse people about what a twin flame actually is. And not every person has a twin flame. And that doesn't mean it's just your soul's agreement. Like that takes some balls to actually decide to split your soul and to experience two different lives simultaneously. With amnesia. With amnesia. With, with amnesia. amnesia. And I'm going to, let me hit on that just a little bit. And I'm going to try, this is kind of personal. Um, the, the girls know the full story, but I, I don't feel like I can share the full, full story. But the other night or a couple of days ago, actually, I was, um, 
I take a salt bath every single night. These ladies know that they do too. And I was in my salt bath and I had what I thought was a vision. Um, and I saw myself walking down this hallway with my twin up in the galactics, wherever we were. And I was feeling immense dread walking down this hallway. I knew that I was going with the other person, the other half, to take this life, to take this incarnation that I'm in now. And I was not happy about it. I was very upset. I didn't want to do it, but I knew I had to. And the last thing the other half said to me was like, I will find you. And then I had the experience of actually going through the portal to come into this life. And what's so crazy about this is that my birthday is on Friday. Everybody knows I have not liked my birthday. I've always been very stressed about it. And I actually was going through my baby book that my mother saved for me today. And I was looking through like, like, here's a picture of a cat I drew when I was like two that my mother saved. And I'm looking at all these like little kid things. Like my mother saved a, a letter of that my, she wrote to my dad when um, I first started walking and sorry guys, my computer's doing something here. Um, and I'm like looking at this stuff and I've literally just had this memory of, t of, of coming through this portal to take this life. And I was like ancient. Like mm -hmm. I didn't look ancient. I felt very, but I could tell that I was old, that I had been around for a while. And I'm looking at these pictures of like me as a freaking baby. And I'm like, this is so crazy. And, um, and then I told, but when I got out of the bath, I like text the girls. And I was like, I don't know what th this was. And Taylor was like, boo, you had a memory. Um, because you've oh. seen this in your quantum experiences, right? That this is a normal, what I described is what happens when you take the dropping in. I like to call it the in. dropping in. It's, 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 it's especially because this life, we also, some of us were separated from our, our flames for a long time too, because we had to anchor this energy in for multiple lives. But this life, if, if that's a choice you chose before you incarnated to have this twin plane experience, this is the life that it's supposed to come together. And what I've seen through sessions is it's a drop in. I mean, it's, it's like your volunteer, it's a mission, earth mission. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? So it's a drop in. That's what I've yeah. seen. <laughs> and I told the girls, like, I saw us like sitting in a chair, like almost like it was almost like a electric chair, like <laughs> execution, like sitting in a chair, like facing each other. We had to be strapped down. And I saw the light go underneath and it was like, whoosh, like all of a sudden you were like, put. but I knew walking down that hall because I've come to this earth, an orb just went by me. I've come to this earth so many fucking times. Like I've been here so many times. And, um, I, I remember walking and knowing the heaviness of what this was going to entail this life and the importance of, of, of coming in and, and meeting again to do the work and that there was going to be amnesia. There was going to be a veil. And we, I knew we weren't going to remember, like I knew that. And that was what was so scary because it's not just one person losing memory. It's both people losing that memory. And, um, and this is all unfolding again, while we're looking at the Magdalene who, um, again, is, I, I don't believe is here on the earth right now in human form, but here in spirit, just like Yahshua is here in spirit, not in human form. And the Magdalene was Yahshua's twin flame. And I know that's going to upset a lot of people to hear that, but they were the same soul that split into the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Together, they were the Christ consciousness. Um, together, they held that power, that energy. And so if we think about that from the, the dark, you know, the dark Holtz perspective, that love story is such a high vibration that the dark can't handle it. Mm -hmm. And that's why they want to keep the twins apart. Now on my community tab, I showed, um, I showed a clip from Hedwig and the, Ang and the Angry Inch, uh, the song, The Origins of Love, which is taken from Plato's symposium, which explains the splitting of the souls. And that, that that's where we get the concept of making love, of putting yourself back together vibrationally back together, which we're not going to go into the graphic details of what happens, but I think all the adults watching this know what that is, you know, and that's where the origins of love started was the souls putting themselves back together. Um, 
you ladies want to comment on that? Are you, did you um, talk about you? <laughs> yeah, you just had something go in front of you, Taylor. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to touch on too. Um, a lot of right now what's happening too is a lot of telepathy between twin flames that I've never met right now. Um, so that's like big, I'm trying to figure out how to say this appropriately, I guess, um, without going too deep into it, but, um, definitely a lot of telepathy going on. Um, and your twin flame is somebody you meet later on in life. Yeah. Not, it's not usually your first love or anything like that. Um, because you have to work on yourself first. So, um, and it, it's somebody that not exactly like you, but it's almost like having like a twin, like you're born with a twin, you have a lot in common, like a ton of things in common and you have that telepathy, but it's not every little last thing. Like you said, Bryce, you're still a whole person and yeah. that other person is still a whole person. But I just yeah. wanted to touch on that real quick. That was perfect. Like also, like you said, something so perfect too, like love your, can you love yourself so fully that you can have this aspect of yourself? Like that's the challenge in itself. And I mean, I've had sessions with people with twin flames that are in union, but it's definitely like a, this lifetime thing, but it's definitely like people are starting to realize after this, like crumbling energy we've had, especially after like, you know, everything that's happened in the past couple of years, which woke a lot of people up to people are really questioning their karmic karmic relationships, right? They're questioning karmic relationships that maybe in their marriages or their relationships, but friendships, all these things are being questioned right now. So it's like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know. I, it's like the questioning of everything has started to bring this into fruition for people too, right? Yeah. Interesting. I recorded part three of the Magdalene series today. Um, and she actually does speak about telepathy. She does speak about the heart center. You know, you think about if you share a soul with someone, there is like an energetic connection there, even though we can't see it. And so there is communication that starts to happen offline, you know, without the texting, without it, 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 it happens, you know? And so a lot of people I know are experiencing that right now and it's bizarre and it's wild and, you know, I, I don't have, we don't have all the answers. Like we know that they're trying to keep people apart because people coming together with that type of frequency will up the, up the ante of the progression into fourth density positive, And they obviously cannot handle that vibration. And so there's a lot that's being done to try to stop people from connecting a lot of confusion. And um, I spoke about this too, I think on part two of the Magdalene series, when we look at things like black magic it screws with people's heads, but it can't touch their heart center. And so when that type of division happens, it's the head that's confused, but that heart center is always going to know the truth. That's why it's important to trust your gut. That same type of sensation, right? Yeah. Conscious mind versus subconscious all over again. And you can be in contact with the subconscious energy of another too. So just remember that like the quantum energy is that it's quantum, it's unlimited. It's, 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 or excuse me, it's, it's limitless almost. So it's like, even if the, like, even if your reality isn't matching what you're feeling or seeing, just remember that we're I'm trying to be careful with how I say this. I want to say like quantum leap, jump, something like that, but I'm trying to also be very careful with the energy, but just know that if you're starting to get these, Bryce called it a vision, but like these memories coming in, they are memories. I just, I just kind of want to affirm that for people. I got they emotional when you said that to me, you're like, girl, that's a memory. Yeah. I got yeah. emotional because oh, I, yeah. of, course, of course, like, why would I think about that? Like, why would that come into my head of sitting there and seeing that happen? Um, but that's the veil dropping as well. That's moving into fourth density positive, which we will get some of our memories back. We'll be reclaiming that. And yeah. Um, yeah. And proof spellcasting is not working much anymore, like on their backs, desperate. That came out in a session. They're on their backs and desperate. So they're getting weak. Just hold that in your knowing. Yes. And the reason, sorry if I'm interrupting. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing too, and I'm not sure if I should even say this, but I guess I'll just touch on it really gently here, um, is a lot of the reason why they're wanting to separate the whole 
twin flame idea right now is the whole Christ consciousness um, coming into the world. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And so um, I, I love that Taylor said their powers are like waning right now. We, I know I've been attacked and that's what sucks is because we don't know, we don't have memory of anything, you know, and, but this group is able to access the Akashic records nefariously without our consent and get therefore obtain information. Um, now I know, and I've put this on Twitter a few times and I love you guys so much that have been sharing our videos because I have, I have my channel is being shadow banned right now and it's not being banned by YouTube. And theirs is also being banned, messed with as well. Well, it's like um, they can't touch us. So they're going for whatever attempts they can because the physical harm. I mean, we're not going to touch on the physical harm because, because I just saw the Akash. I just saw the Akash light up golden. Like I know it's ours again. Like that's clear to me. We're not going to touch too much on that, but we do just want to be very clear. Like they're so desperate. They can't touch us anymore that they're going for whatever they can. So they're going to harm, harm you however they can. And this came through in a session too. And I know Bryce and Stephanie um, in our private conversations, we've talked about the Mr. Smith effect. So the, your loved ones, the people near you, um, people you trust, like, and I'm not saying don't trust anyone. I'm just saying, trust yourself first, right? Trust your own inner knowing. And it's like, they're going to use anything against you at this time. Cause they can't touch you. Like that's how powerful you are. They can't touch you. So they're desperate. Like it's literal desperation at this point. So my, I mean, my ad sense, I mean, that's, that's what pays my bills really right now is, I mean, I, I have other income as well, obviously, cause I still teach, but, um, I've been very fortunate during this time to get ad sense on my videos, which does help. Yeah. And my ad sense this month has dropped by two thirds for no reason whatsoever. And it's because of magic. Um, they're trying to hurt me financially, uh, which isn't going to work because again, even though, I do rely on YouTube, but also don't at the same time. So um, it's not going to work. You can mess with the AdSense all you want. It's it's not going to change anything in my life. It's not going to hurt me. You can't hurt me. I'm f we are all far stronger. The light is always stronger than the darkness. I just like to also verify too, like for those of you who are like against like monetization and things like that, like you don't understand. Like I, I have, we have to meet with each other when we can, uh, when we can, because they're so busy. You don't, you guys don't understand how much work they put into their shows, how much work they put into their reads, like, and trying to live life too, trying to be human, spiritual being, having a human ex experience and trying to ex assist the collective. So just hold that in your knowing that like, we're all trying the best we can. Like we really are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a full-time job. YouTube is a full-time job. Yeah. It took me six hours today to put together part three of the Magdalene, you know, and I, and I feel very grateful for, I'm so grateful to my patrons. First of all, you guys are awesome. I'm so appreciative, but I'm also grateful that I can put a couple of ads in there that can give me that, that support so that I don't, so that I can do YouTube because if I didn't have that fully support, I wouldn't be able to have a channel because I would have to go because we still have bills to pay. We're still in the matrix as far as our lives, you know, we still have food to buy and, you know. I wanted to also tell um, our viewers uh, something that happened to me the other day. I was, I was going through my videos. I often, on my own worst self-critic, like I don't know if I said that right. I, I'm having a hard time talking properly today, but um, I was going through a couple of my videos and I always go through, just make sure that I didn't put anything out there. That's going to give me a strike or anything like that. But something had me go to a specific video. I posted early last week um, where I was talking about, you know, finding your own purpose and don't rely on the tarot cards to tell you what your purpose is. Rely on yourself, your inner knowing. Um, and I don't know why, but um, I texted Taylor at one o'clock in the morning while viewing it and somebody, and I do know who, I won't put it out there, but I do know who, and I'm very confident of who this person is, um, messed with my channel using black magic. And within 
10 to 20 seconds in the video, you could see it visually, my face starts to distort. And I actually look like I'm about 30 to 40 pounds heavier in the face. Like literally I looked like a huge oompa loompa really. Um, and I think this person knows I have a, a, a thing with self image. I, I think they do know that. So it was like, they're trying to harm me, but I do know I don't look like that. So I took that video down um, because I didn't want anybody to think that I'm messing with magic in that way. Um, so that's something that happened to me. I was, I was devastated for about 10 seconds. And then I went back to our last video and re rewatched where we were laughing our asses off a couple of times to cheer myself up. Cause that just does it for me. <laughs> well guys, before, before we started filming, they go, Bryce, please don't talk about having a little French in you in this episode <laughs> <laughs> or do, <laughs> or do I'm just or being <laughs> by a giant and breaking. <laughs> so that was my favorite part of that video. When you said that you're like, guys, I can't handle a giant. I break. <laughs> <laughs> like I nearly pee myself. <laughs> I'm listening yeah. to that, but I just wanted to bring it up that, you know, if you did do that video well after the fact, me posting it and you saw that, that was not me. I did not do that in the video. That was somebody messing with my, um, my footage in that video. So, um, I got a little nervous cause I, you know, I thought that people would think I'm messing with black magic, but, um, I've never had a want to mess with anything like that. And I'm service to others, not service to sell. Yeah. So that's not anything I would ever get involved in. Um, being in the Christian faith for so long, it even took me, I couldn't tell you how long to figure out that I needed to start reading cards and, and doing all that kind of work for the light. And so I'm very, very cautious when I do um, read anything in my cards or use my pendulum or anything like that. And I um, wanted to bring that up to the viewers. Yeah, none of us are practicing any type of magic like that. I'm very much against um, trying to control another person. Mm -hmm. I just don't like, I, to me, it just, it's gross. Um, I wouldn't, especially when it comes to like, again, love spells, like I would never be comfortable laying beside a man knowing that I had manipulated him into being there with me. Like that's gross. I am totally fine by my, like, I would rather be by myself than, um, than ever be in a situation where I didn't believe that man truly wanted to be with me for me, mm -hmm. you know, so that any type of, of manipulating somebody else's free will or trying to trick them. Um, the whole natal chart thing, I did a show with, uh, with Cindy day, we we're talking about it. And I said, you know, I've, I've had my chart read by my consent three times in my life. Once was from a spiritualist here in Georgia, who's not on YouTube. And I trust her once was with my Vedic teacher, philosophy teacher over in India, who's also not on YouTube, whom I love and trust. And the third was from Tamara, who is what, like my family who I trust completely. So with all three people who've ever had access, I've given permission to do that for, I trust completely. I've never consented to anybody else doing that. And I didn't know when it happened to me, I found out that this is common. This is done a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was so weird. Cause I had a meeting with, like, I've been dealing with a lot of, obviously as things have picked up, I noticed I'm dealing a lot of this residue energy of like been calm curses, hexes, black magic, whatever we want to call them. I've been dealing with residue of this on people. And I was having a conversation with someone and she was like, I was like, it's just so weird. Like there's so many people practicing this. And she goes, no, no, no. You don't realize they also buy people to do these things to people. And it makes me feel like I'm such a dumbass Cause like they literally, I guess like you could go any, I don't even want to say this. I like, I apparently you can find people to do that shit for you. And that's bonkers to me. The fact that you would go out of your way to do something to make someone want you, like you, whatever the, whatever the hell your intentions are. That's just the gateway drug. Bryce always says that like love spells or whatever, a gateway drug. I, I bet it is. I bet it is. That's. If you're know. that desperate, you need to work on yourself. Yeah. It's all about hearing your own self love. Mm -hmm. If you're that, if you're that desperate for a man to love you, that you're going and doing this shit, you need to work on yourself. Yeah. 
that's the only thing that's going to heal that pain is if you work on yourself. Work with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't. And, and for me, I mean, you think about it when you're casting these spells, they're going to wear off eventually. So what does that mean? That means you got to keep doing it. Well, it goes back to that parasitic energy of life force energy too. Like whose light have they been using? Because they're not using the source's light whenever you're doing that. So whose energy are you draining? It goes back to the talk of like energy vampires, but I realize it's a bigger thing than just an energy vampire. Like whose light are they using? And you can start to see now people deteriorating and things like that because of one black magic, but two, now they're going to start to be exposed. I think I made this clear. I think Steph made this clear. I think Bryce made this clear. Like there's, isn't there like a Bible verse? that's like all that's not in the light shall be revealed. I'm not saying it right. I'm the dark it, will be but like, to light. everything yeah. dark will be brought to light. That's this time. That's the exposure. Yeah. That's why all of this stuff is coming out now. That's why you see truthers that you loved and trust coming out and it's being exposed. And I, I did a video on this whole thing too, where it had to be this way. Mm -hmm. Um, Thing, you know, people that you did love and trust. That's why I go all the way back to that whole thing. Do not idolize even truthers, you know, because you just, first of all, you just don't know them. And I'm not saying we're not trustworthy because, you know, I trust you girls and everything like that. But that's why I don't, I'm not asking to be on a bunch of people's shows right now because I'm being very, very cautious about my, my circle of people that I surround myself with right now. Um, but Right now, it's exposure, exposure, exposure. There's a lot of things that are being brought to light. And yeah, it can be kind of devastating. But the thing is, um, it has to be this way. And nothing can hide itself now if you are practicing any sort of black magic. If you are a truther out there and you are not, your intentions are service to self and not for others. If you are of the dark, you're not of the light. Guess what? God's light will expose you. Yeah. So there's and no I, hiding anymore. That's a good point because obviously we, we're not going to say names on this channel, guys. We're just not because it's tacky. It's tacky. It's tacky. Um, but, and we also trust you that you can see things for yourself. And, you know, I know everybody saw what was happening to me before I figured out, saw me deteriorating, saw me losing my life force, but there was more going on as well. And I just kind of feel now that, you know, I, the girls know um, for those months that I was being attacked, I would wake up every morning with blood in my mouth. I mean, there, it was serious. What was happening to me was very, very scary. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes me emotional when I think about it. And when I figured it out and by the grace of God, I figured it out by help from others. And, you know, I was able to, and help from the off-worlders, I was able to put there and I started to get my, my life force back. And you can actually see who it is that's doing, that was doing it to me, because guess what? They can't use my life force anymore. So you know what's happening? They're deteriorating. They don't like the shiny lights. And I wanted to say that too, if you guys are noticing the Mr. Smith effect around you and people are affecting you, or you feel like they're draining you, bound, it's, ba it's boundary time. It's time to go within. It's self-care. goes full circle to what if the internet does go down? Like, what do you have? What are you going to do? trust yourself, read a book, journal, whatever you need to do. But like boundaries are going to be imperative right now. And Steph talked about keeping her circle small. And if you have to do that, it's okay. And if they're upset or triggered at you for, for that cutoff, then they have something they need to work on that has nothing to do with you. And don't be upset like with yourself. Don't feel guilt or anything like that. We've all felt guilty for so long. Like guilt is a lower frequency than fear. They wanted us to feel guilty for not wearing these, not getting these. There's, there's so much more to that, right? But guilt yeah. is, there's a reason they wanted you to feel guilt. And now they're shifting it into fear. Well, they're, they don't have any of this energy of fear anymore because we're realizing how strong and how powerful we are because they want our light. They, I call it like the yummy light. Like they want our, like the yummy light, They but they can't anymore. The Akash is golden. I just watched it go golden. Let's go. Try me. I, mean, I will say, I will say, whatever the devil makes for bad, God will use for good. And that whole, these last two months that have been hell on earth for me behind the scenes, full transparency. It's been a lot to carry, but if it hadn't happened, I wouldn't know who the fuck I am. Mm. And I know that now I know who I've been in the past. I don't know everything, but I know who I am now. I know why they wanted my chart and I'm owning that. You can't have my chart. It's mine. 
so cool. I'm just like all this hard work. I'm just watching us dig and dig and dig. And then like, finally you're like, oh my gosh, a treasure chest is starting to be exposed. Like I'm seeing the top of a treasure chest right now, but imagine when that comes to fruition, like what's in that for you, you know, it's like, (laughs) yeah. And it, it, I just love how God works. And I, I did a a channeled message from God uh, about two or three weeks ago. And, um, I didn't monetize that message and there was a reason for it. And I wasn't going to say anything, but that message was just specifically a gift from God for the people to listen to. Um, And uh, so I did not monetize it because um, I just felt that that was not appropriate for me to, but in that message, um, I think one of the most important things I touch on in that channeled message was God goes, it will look like, I'm, a th- um, I'm always a thousand steps ahead of the devil, but I'm three to four, s- when it looks like I'm three to four steps behind the devil. Mm-hmm. So it goes back to what you said, Bryce, what the devil makes for evil, God makes for good. So yes, this last couple months have been a living hell for you on your end, but you've figured things out. And in the meantime, it allowed me to actually start to get to know who my soul truly is and who I am and actually find out, find out who stole my natal chart once upon a time, three times in my life, the same person, somebody I trusted with my life, somebody I've known most of my life, my whole life. So I found out a lot of things about me. I found out why I came here. And I know everything now. So thanks to the entities who did their dirty work, because now we know. And that's what brought the three of us together. Yes. And the three of us have a long history. We're so old. We're so old. (laughs) They they tried to keep us apart. No, it didn't work. Well, that's what I kept thinking when I was thinking about that memory was, even though I was so upset, like I did not, y'all did not want to come to earth. I was like, screw this. I've done this too many times, but I knew I had to, I knew I had, I I had to do it. And obviously my other half had to do it as well. Um, But I remember feeling, even though I, in my higher self, I looked young, I remember feeling like I've I'm old. Like I've been doing this yeah. forever. So, so yeah. And, 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 and that is, and, and of course the, the dark arts, of course they had the upper hand because they were not playing fair and they were accessing our charts to try to figure out the soul contracts. You, there's this part in Harry Potter. I just had a vision of it. I'm so sorry. I got a Harry Potter real quick again. There's this part in Harry Potter where Voldemort's like trying to possess Harry. And Harry, this whole time, this whole, um, it's the fifth one, uh, Order of the Phoenix, he's struggling with his being a part of Voldemort and like getting pulled both directions from his anger, his shadow self. And at the very end of it, he's in this huge battle and Voldemort's trying to possess him and take him over and like literally trying to like go into his body. And he's like showing him these memories and freaking him out and all these things. And all of a sudden Harry goes, no. No, I feel sorry for you because you do not know love or friendship and Voldemort's not able to like access that and like access him anymore. Isn't that funny? That's exactly what we're shifting and doing now. And Harry chose to say that, chose to to see that. He chose to see the love versus all the hate that was coming at him. So it's really, really fascinating. That's where I feel like we're at. We're at that. Like, we know love. We know friendship. Do you? We know loyalty. We know integrity. We know honesty. Mm -hmm. We know humor. We know how to laugh. I know. I know that I would never even think to do the shit these people have done. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And I don't know... I don't know how they can live with themselves, to be honest with you. I don't know how anybody lives with themselves. You avoid it. You can't look yourself in the mirror. I bet bet they can't look themselves in the mirror for what they've done. Unless you're really polarized service to self that you have such a big ego that you can't even accept that you've effed with people's lives. I don't know. I mean, and yeah, maybe Harry Potter's right. For those who have been using my natal chart, I feel sorry for you. Oh, got him. The fact that you felt like you had to fucking take somebody else's soul contract to give yourself a substance that's pathetic 
that's fucking pathetic. And that's gross. And I feel sorry for you because you know what I don't have to do. I don't have to do that. I know who I am. Even before this, I knew who I was as a human being. I knew what my boundaries were. I knew what my morals were. I didn't need a religion to tell me right from wrong because I knew it in my heart. I knew I would, I knew I never, I don't want to hurt anybody. I never want to hurt anybody. I'm not, that's, I know these girls don't ever want to hurt anybody. I know these girls have a sense of humor and have love for humanity. The fact that some people have infiltrated the truth or community to pretend like they actually give a shit about humanity is gross too. It's gross. It's feeding off people and their emotions. It is. And that's not okay. We're all feeling things. We're all emotional. And if you're, if that's what, if that's what it, your plan is, then I feel so. I feel sorry for you. Yeah. And karma. karma. Yeah, you can't you can't avoid karma. Mm-mm. You can't. So doing these, you got to pay. Things, it's no, it, you got to pay the piper. Yeah, and, and going forward, those people in their their lifetimes going forward, it's it's probably going to be a rough life. No. I don't wish bad upon anybody, but this is a this is a grave they dig them they dug for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's one thing I want, Taylor, because people have asked a lot about karmic relationships. Can we explain that a little bit? I usually say like karmic relationships are like your family. That's big time karmic, but like your biological family. However, my sister and I aren't karmic at all. We actually have a very dharmic relationship. Mm-hmm. So can we explain that to people like what karmic is? Yeah, for sure. So we make soul contracts with people and I can actually like when I'm working with someone, I can see their soul contracts like pop up on my screen. So if you ever see um, some of us look over here or over here, um, you know, who's a really good example of that. I think she's also Tamara. She, Mm -hmm. she looks to the side. I think she's accessing her information on a screen because that's what, that's what I do too, which is so cool. Um, that someone else I noticed did that. So whenever I see the soul contracts come up, basically what these soul contracts are, are agreements that you made before you incarnated. These are to advance the soul. If you're already a very advanced soul, you might be doing them a favor and triggering them and advancing their soul. So we're at this weird point where we're starting to transition away from these soul contracts that are not for our highest good, but they could have been for our highest good at one time to help advance our soul so that they could learn lessons and things like that. But we're actually coming into a really interesting new period where I do believe like we rewrite our future, future proves uh, proves past. Like we are literally clearing our own karma. And just because you've cut that tie doesn't mean they're done with what they need to do. But so it's really about the concern of the self. If you get triggered by this person or the soul contract and you, it's how you choose, it goes back to choices too, how you choose to respond. Do I scream, get upset? Or is my soul in a place now where I understand, whoa, that's just how they feel about themselves. They're just projecting it onto me. And we all just continue to trigger until one of us decides I either cut that or I don't let it bother me, which is easier said than done, especially when it's your family unit, right? <laughs> and yeah. you guys can add whatever. They're not the easiest that. relationships either. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I do that. I do that often. The learning (laughs) lessons, relationships. Learning lessons is where you learn the the big lessons. And there's dharmic relationships. Like my sister and I have a very dharmic relationship. We have a dharmic relationship, three of us. It's just there's there's a purpose there. Oh, my lights. (laughs) Where'd they go? Is that is that uh, fine? I tripped uh, in my chair (laughs) because I'm really, really, really um, graceful. Um, no, but that, that like we, the three of us have a very dharmic relationship. I feel like there's, there's, we're, we're growing together. We're helping each other. There's no like triggering, you know, and, and my sister and I are that way, which is odd because usually your biological family is very karmic, but my sister and I are not karmic at all. Um, we're very even keeled, um, helping each other, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. And, and, uh, then of course the twin flame relationship, obviously, as we started with, that's a very different relationship because that's basically your, your other half. And I explained it on the, the Mary video part three, I kind of explained it this way. Um, you know, when you were kids, you could get that, those necklaces with like your best friend. It was like, you could split the pendant in two and one that's friend had one. That's kind of like the twin flame, like the necklace is whole in itself, but the other half is on your best friend. Yeah. But it's a whole necklace yeah. on itself that, and they come together and they connect. 
you know, and so, and, and, the, and again, the reason why the twins can't come in together early on in life is because, again, you go through amnesia, you go through the veil when you take this life and there are things you have to restabilize yourself in order to be whole before that magic can be made with that other half. That makes sense. Yeah. And with all this stuff too, Taylor, you brought up a good point too. We are expecting that at some point we're going to have the tower moment, which is the humanity, humanity's tower moment where everything has to flip. And we don't know what's going to happen when that happens. We have no idea, but um, there is a possibility that like the internet could go down. That's a possibility, right? So for everybody watching, um, we want to make sure that everybody is solid within themselves so that, I mean, it's so awesome that everybody is finding these divination tools. And that's so cool that we're at a place in our humanity where people are open again to like being able to talk to the divine through cards or through a board. But we want to make sure that not that, that people aren't so dependent upon a reader that they can't handle it when the lights go out, that they can still sit within themselves. Does that make sense? Do you girls want to add a, that? Yeah, I think a good reader is a good teacher. And I was watching Stephanie teach someone the other day and it like, I don't know. I just, <laughs> first off, of course, I'm like, I'm cheesy because I'm a friend, but like, it's just watching, watching us pass on these tools and things to other people. I think, I think that's the whole point. And I also think, I think it's okay if you need a little extra help and a little extra boost, but Stephanie always says it too. When she reads for people, she's like, take what resonates. Like, I'm just telling you what's coming through the channel, you know, but you, you decide, you take it, you decide, right? When you get comfortable enough, and this is starting to happen to me, I don't even need the cards sometimes. I don't even need my pendulum sometimes Yeah, because it's like your higher self is connected with God. It's an antenna. And uh, if you tweak the antenna just right on the TV, you get the signal. So when you tweak the antenna right on your higher self, you audibly or visually see things or hear things and know you're not going crazy. You are legitimately hearing from the source, which is God. And so it's fascinating as I've been doing these channelings this week, when I channeled a lot of the people I read for, I kind of, I almost kind of like felt like I was almost like you Taylor for a second. You get a lot of visual stuff. I do too. I, I get a lot of auditory, but I started to actually, the cards would talk to me for like just a second, but then I'd actually get an actual vision of what I was seeing. Um, and to see the look on someone's face and go, Oh my gosh, that's what I was envisioning. Like there was like serious telepathy going on. And that's like really fascinating. And that's when I know I'm channeling correctly is when, they it's you could you could feel their energy like light up mm -hmm. and it's like just trusting that inner knowing and um it's just a tool the, the cards and the pendulums and all that stuff it's just a tool and just having that trust within yourself trusting yourself loving yourself that's part of trusting yourself is loving yourself mm -hmm. and we were programmed not to do that we were programmed to always think that we need to second guess ourselves. Someone else knows better. Um, and yeah. 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 And it's super, super important to get in touch with yourself. And I think the beauty with the lights going out and everything will be that a lot of us are going to have to sit down with ourselves and get to know ourselves. Yeah. Look at things I haven't looked at. And, and even if you're not into tools or things like that, like that first intuitive hit, that first yes or no, trust it, trust it. But also that, like what does bring you joy? Like if the lights were to go out and you didn't have to get on the internet or you didn't have to go to your job, what do you like to do? Like, do you, if it's nice out, do you like the garden? Sorry, I'm in Florida. Of course, I'm thinking of gardening. A lot of y'all yeah. have snow. I have no room to say, Taylor. Go make a snowman, right? No. <laughs> You don't want to go outside stuff. No, can you come get me? Yeah. I'll try you yeah. in Florida. We'll garden together. Yeah, girl. <laughs> You're like, I'll garden for, for Florida, right? Right. Oh, okay. This is me. I hate Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. And Bryce is going to get snow here soon. Oh, Y'all, it's so freaking weird. They keep moving the snow. <laughs> now, again... <laughs> literally that's how they steal that's how they sit on the radio so again <sighs> we are for those who are not from the united states where i live is called the sun belt it's called in the summertime you sweat more than a whore in church like it is hot <laughs> <in the walls. laughs> it's so hot here i mean we 
at night, you got a fan going, you got the air conditioning going on full blast. Like, it is hot. And it's not just hot, it's humid. So it is like walking through a bowl of hot effing soup all the time. That's why we talk. That's why people talk real slow down here in the South because it's too damn hot to talk yeah, fast. Sure, bro. Yeah. And when you ask a Southerner to, for a glass of tea, there we don't drink hot tea. It's iced tea. That is sweet iced tea. That's what you get down here in the South. So the in our winters, like you never really know what you're going to get in the winter. And like I've, I've joked, like I actually went and bought a pair of gloves because I didn't even own a pair of gloves. I mean, it's this is a light sweater and I've got a tank top on and it's February 2nd, right? Like this is it for today. Mm-hmm. This is fine for me today um, here in, in Georgia. Yeah. Oh, so so when they start talking about the possibility of snow, even if it's just like a little flurry, everything in the city shuts down. The pig and wiggly sells out of bread and water. It's the fucking apocalypse. And Wait, what is your grocery store called? It's a piggly piggly grocery wiggly. store chain down here called a piggly wiggly. Piggly wiggly. I'm so jealous. I want a piggly wiggly. Piggly wiggly. Um, <laughs> We, we have, have like big yeah, Y and, and stop and like, shop up here. I mean, it's <laughs> mostly in small towns. You got the or the pig, as people call it. I shop at Publix and Kroger, but everything sells out of bread and water. Like it is like doomsday. But we don't have any of the equipment here to handle snow, so we don't have the salters for the road. So it literally like you can't leave your house. And it's been interesting. We had like this freak little snow a couple weeks ago on a Sunday, and everything shut down, and then it melted, and then it's like today was like seventy outside. You know, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we were supposed to have a blizzard one weekend. And then on the radio, I'm like driving down the car to the grocery store. And they're like, now the, the stone store has been moved. It's been moved. And I thought that was interesting. So the next weekend, and then it was moved again. And apparently it's coming this weekend, which I find very, very interesting because we know Atlanta is dirty, dirty, dirty. We've got Girl. all sorts of Mm-mm. big, big players down here, including Coca-Cola, uh, the CNN Center. CDC, Ted Turner, his whole thing. We got the old golden owl on top of the Ted Turner. That's just like that campground, we'll say, in California. Um, oh. Close to the Guidestones, which I've oh, talked yeah. about on my channel. I've been there a few times. Um, we've got Underground Atlanta. We've got apparently the Fountain of Youth. Take that with what you will. So there's a lot. We know Atlanta's probably, it was Atlantis. There's probably some reason why they honed in on this area of the world. So I don't know. I'm thinking this snowstorm might be um, purposeful, but by the good guys this time to keep Mm -hmm. citizens inside. I don't know though. Who knows? We'll see if they move it again. (laughs) So, um, So yeah, we've got that coming this weekend as well. Saturday night, I think the 5th into the 6th of February. Yeah. I was going to say, too, like, with that. yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Steph. <laughs> Steph like, I'm both sitting my life, bro. literally with a foot of snow outside my door. Aww. You want some of that snow, Bryce? I'll send it your way. You know, I have <laughs> this, this romantic view of, like, being in a snowstorm, but, like, by the fireplace. Ooh. Well, it's romantic for maybe 10 seconds and then it gets nasty, dirty, and looks like a bunch of dog shit on the side of the road. So <laughs> it's, it's awful. And I'm not one for the cold. I hate the cold so much. I will, I want a palm tree. I want a beach and I want sunshine. So let's go to Florida girl. Come in your way, Taylor. Come in your way. I I'll take you. I'll take you all. Let's all go. Okay. Two dogs and a child. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I was going to say too. So start. I would almost say like start weaning your. I, I bet a lot of people are already doing this. So you know how back like whenever the everything first like started with the truther movement, like you wash so many things. Well, I think that's okay if you only take what resonates, right? But you're probably starting to notice that like what you're watching is started to even kind of like man, <laughs> like only a couple people you really resonate with now. So think about that. Think about how we've been weaned off that. So I was just going to say like weaning yourself off the internet, weaning yourself away from your phone. Like this is the time to order books. This is the oh, time yeah. to like really start a new routine in the morning. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. You can still drink your coffee. You can still eat like eggs and cheese. I don't care what you do. Like I'm never going to be one of those people that's like has to be a certain way but what can you add in your journey that gives you a little bit more time with yourself and brings you joy right you know it's funny i just filmed with cindy uh we were talking about venus being the 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 planet of pleasure and not just sexual pleasure but like other like the things you enjoy in life yeah 
like the little French, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, wow. so, and I was like that one again. One, one, I just had to make that joke. One, t- uh, one thing I love to do that I've always loved to do since I was a kid, I love to read shocker, right? I love to read. And so I, I have my books that are like educational, like my philosophy books that I read. Like, obviously we're reading the Magdalene book and I've got my Sophia books. I haven't started yet, but I also just ordered a ton of like my favorite fun reads are like murder yeah. mysteries. Like I love whodunits. <laughs> Like when I was, a, when I was, a, my favorite show growing up was Matlock. Now, little trivia, Matt, y'all know the show Matlock. Remember that show with Andy Griffith about the law? Okay, look it up because it was a big show in like the eighties and nineties, and it was about this lawyer here in Atlanta that was like really good at getting people off. Now, in real life, that lawyer was based off of a lawyer here in Georgia called Bobby Lee Cook. And his grandson and I were grew up together. We went to school together. And his mom, or his aunt, actually, his mom's sister, and my mom were good friends as kids as well. So, so I was always like, oh yeah, I grew up with Matlock's like kids, you know. But um, yeah, Matlock. I love Murder She Wrote. Like I loved all of those shows, those old lady shows when I was a kid. And so I read. That's that's my fun reads. And so I just ordered a bunch of like easy books uh, today and they just came in i'm super excited i get in the bathtub with my salts and i read you know it's so fun um you know heaven that's like heaven for me like a bath and a book and like nothing else to do like let's go like (laughs) my piano yeah you got my piano you don't need you don't need electricity for that do you no not with (laughs) this one so i i have two pianos weirdly enough i ended up in the summer of 2020 um, getting a free baby grand piano. Yeah, that that's a weird story. And it was definitely orchestrated by the divine. That's, that's a definite because there was 11 people ahead of me that were going to get that piano. And this woman, she's spiritual and God told her she needed to give it to me. I even offered her like a couple hundred dollars at the time. I was still working then on the books. And uh, she's like, nope, nope, you need to, I don't know why, but you need to have this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've, I've made up my own music my whole life. I've been kind of rusty with that, but that's something I'm going to be getting back into is starting to write my music again. Um, I, I took my flute out for the first time and I don't know how long because I have been playing flute since I was nine. And um, that was like my life back when I was a kid. I used to play nine hours a day. Um, yeah, I had no life, <laughs> but music is my life. Um, and then singing was the other thing. Like I'm just, I'm all about the music and everything like that. And then the other thing that I tend to do is I do a lot of reading about um, health and um, now more holistic medication since I come from the medical field. So um, that's probably something I'm going to be looking into is like the herbal medicine and like going back, I've been making my own herbal medicine tinctures and all that kind of stuff and the healing oils. And I've made um, like a, like a, Bomb, what do, I forgot what it's called. It's some sort of um, topical for like eczema and stuff like that. So that's something I'm getting into and reading up on. So that's mm-hmm. something else, you know, if people are interested in those things, you know, get your instruments out that are rusty in the, not rusty, but like dusty. That's what I meant to say. Dusty. See, I can't talk okay today. <laughs> dusty, dusty. In your closet, you know, take out that old trombone. Or <laughs> take drum. out that old trombone. So what you had a band camp? Stephanie, I had a vision of you in like a robe in the dark and you're playing the piano and like, your son walks down and he's like, mom, what are you doing? And you're like, because I'm stronger than yesterday. And everyone's just shook. Yeah. 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 So when I do play my piano, my, my um, son comes downstairs. He goes, are you, are you serious, mom? Are you serious? I'm like, do I suck? He goes, no, but. You could have chosen a in, an instrument that's not as loud. I'm like, oh. well, at least it wasn't the drums. <laughs> well, oh, the thing, the, here's the thing: he wants to play the drums. I love the drums. I love a good percussion. Like I, I do too. But that kid is going to have vengeance on me. Okay, if I get him a drum <laughs> set one day. No, and so drummers, okay. Let me tell y'all something, a little backstory. So I lived in Los Angeles for a long time after, after school. And I, my ex was like in the music industry. So I was in and out of like, I met a lot of like never, well, I had one incident where there might've been something weird happening, but that's a different story. But I, you know, never got into, never saw any of what we know now, but, um, we went to see, um, Oh God, my mind's gone Blake. Uh, this, uh, mommy's all right. Daddy's all right. But you know, that song. 
God, what's the name of that band? Now my hand's gone completely. They did the theme song for that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know. I know who you're talking about. I can't know my mind's. It was a great concert. But anyway, the drummer's name was Bunny. And so drummers and rock bands have this reputation for being batshit crazy, but like in a good way. But like, like. I can touch upon that after you're done. They're like. And, um, and, and after the show, we were like, uh, up and up, up at the hard rock and in LA, which is a huge, a huge venue. And like Gene Simmons was up there and all that kind of stuff. And, um, drummer was gone. And like, the joke is like, nobody knows where bunny goes. Like, that's always the joke. Cause after the show, he would always disappear. And like, th- that's the drummers. Like they are just like wild, like drummers are wild, <laughs> um, but they're always kind of cute. So <laughs> Now, if you take it from where I've been in the band geek world back when I was in high school, by the way, in my high school, if you were in band, you weren't a nerd, oddly enough. Um, But we had the funniest percussion um, section and they were batshit crazy. (laughs) They were funny as shit. Like, I love the drum. Like, funny. I would never want to date a drummer like that. Like, I would never want to be like that girl. That's nobody knows where Bunny goes. Like, but <laughs> but they're fun to be like your friends, you know, like your guy friends that are so um a little crazy, a little crazy, but like in a good way, but like in a fun way. If you're not dating them, so they, yeah, they it's were cool the ones the in the they were the ones in the class that always got themselves in trouble. The drummers. You know, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always the percussion section. Always. I don't have like memories of high school. Like I played sports, but like I was fine. I just don't have like memories of like high school. It's so weird. I wasn't a walk-in, trust me. I remember my childhood, (laughs) but I don't have a lot of memories anymore. It's really weird. It's like after my spiritual awakening in my early twenties, I just, it's like I lost access to all that old stuff because I had to bring that's weird that you say that because I was so good at remembering names of people in high school. Like I still remember the names of people I was friends with and everything. And mm-hmm. like, like I was in sports and all that kind of stuff too. And the thing is, um, ever since my spiritual awakening, which was in 2020, um, suddenly I'm forgetting people's names. And I'm also, that stuff is like exiting my brain now. Yeah. It's weird that you say that because yeah. it's ever since yeah. like the last couple of years, I'm not able to recall certain things. And I have a very weird long-term memory. I remember my, my Catholic baptism. That's how yeah. far my memory goes back. And yeah. I even remember the smells of the church and everything like that. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not remembering certain things now yeah. that the last couple of years. Huh. Oh, wow. Certificate of baptism. I should probably one of these days show a couple pictures of, I mean, I was only my, like two months old. Oh my gosh. It's in my baby book. I found it. And I was like, you know how old I was. Like, I don't know. I, my mom still has like the outfit. Like she'd be keeping outfits and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, what is that mom? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's like a, a doily that goes on, on a table. Like normally that's what I <laughs> think they resemble. is like I one of like those like long- lazy doilies. <laughs> well, in the Presbyterian Church, we get baptized. It's, oh, here it is. That's my baptism picture. Oh, look, at that, look at that alien baby. Look at that alien right there. That's a, that's a freaking galactic, isn't it? <laughs> look at that head. Look at that head. Oh, I have a really good alien picture I'm going to post on Friday. Oh, yeah. Of me as a baby. I was a, that's an alien right there. I was like two months old. Um, yeah. Um, but I, you know, I was I was like spiritually attacked my whole entire life. Like I've talked about this a lot. I've had a lot of uh, physical attacks. Um, and so my memories of childhood are interwoven with that kind of stuff. But now at this point, I'm able to like look back and kind of see it a little bit differently because I understand now why that was happening. Mm-hmm. I get it now. But my high school, I my high school was private. And so we didn't have a, a band. We didn't have any of that. Fun yeah. Stuff. It was like, like, it was like, yeah, we didn't have any of that, but I always like, I'll go back. I'm such a nerd. Like I'll go back when I was doing the Mardi Gras uh, research, I was watching like all these high school bands and parades, like doing their thing. I was like, Oh my God, this is so fun. I was like watching them do their little. (laughs) It was, it was a lot of fun to participate in. And um, especially my senior year of high school, you guys will make fun of me. But I was, um, what was my role? You have the, um, the drum majors up, you know, conducting and everything, but I was the field commander, which is above those two. We had two drum majors and I was the field commander. I was so pissed off that I did not get 
drum major because I know I I know how to conduct. I know how to conduct a band and everything. My senior year of high school, I went up on the podium and I conducted a Star Wars medley, and I was so excited about it. You. Let me tell you, you that was one right, of the highlights that, of my life. I look at her. <laughs> <laughs> I light right. up, right? Yep, yep, you would. <laughs> I light up when I talk about this. Um, but um, I, the, the band, the band director pulled me aside and he goes, "No, no, no, you're the you're the leader of the band." And I, I, I say that humbly, but because I was like so darn upset, I practiced so much to get that part, and I, I was able to conduct a little bit, but. I was all excited because we had these big Trojan hats we had to wear. I had the black plume and everybody had the red. <laughs> so I got to stand out a little bit. Excuse me. Move over. <laughs> got my black plume. Um, but yeah, I know I'm a big nerd. But at the same time, I was also an athlete. So it, balanced, it, was, it was a nice balance. I was um, on swim team as well. And I did softball and stuff like that. But um, So there was that good balance of nerdness with ath athletic <laughs> Ism, whatever you want to call it but yeah these memories are just like i don't know where they're going they're going elsewhere and i'm it's because the matrix i mean we've talked yeah. about this the matrix is boring i'd much rather be in the quantum oh i stay quantum like i'm like oh hold on i we have to find something okay on my way i mean <laughs> i am like i i spend most like these was i spend most of my day like literally in this room working and so I don't have to interact with people that are outside of our little realm of reality, unless I'm going to like the grocery store or something. And frankly, lately, I've just been doing Instacart. Um, so I do too. You know, like, I'm just like, yeah, I hate going to the, the store. store. You when know, I go to the store, I'm drained of energy, like so yeah. badly. It's like yeah. A concert. Yeah. It's, it's rough. So, yeah. so I feel like I can kind of stay in that spiritual realm. And I know people have noticed it. We've talked about it, like more orbs are around us. Like we see it not just in my videos, but Taylor, Stephanie, other people's videos. And I said this today on the video I filmed for the Magdalene, like people keep pointing that out to me in my videos, but I guarantee you for the people who are watching, even though you're not recording yourself, so you can't see it, I guarantee you orbs are around oh, you yeah. too, oh. because the veil is thinning. And, yeah. and one thing that's apparent is when we were younger, it was, you know, we were believed that the spiritual life was kind of like a hobby. It was kind of like not reality, but the beautiful thing is that the spiritual life really is reality and the matrix is the illusion. And so it's flipping now. And so, and the matrix is frankly boring. I'm sorry, Satan, but your way of life is frankly uninspiring and boring. It sucks. Send me I, back I, to the quantum. I've been seeing that recently too. this. And I know because you guys hear me say this all the time. So bear with me for listening to this again. It's like that internal, the beautiful visions in your head, waiting for those beautiful visions and seeings and knowings to match your reality. And if you look around and you're like, holy hell, like that doesn't match my reality, but you can start to begin to feel like, I know this is weird, but like, I, since I'm seeing it, it's like the energy shifting and it's going to almost your reality is now going to match that beautiful internal knowing. And I know, I know it may not look like that right now because we have to move through like a, um, I tried to say like cataclysm, but like the tower moment, that's cuter, right? Like we have to move through a tower moment to get to we that. Have to detox. We have to detox first. Yes. A nice purge. Yeah. <laughs> purge. Yeah. Also, so, so like, yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, no, yeah. All you. It's like, and you guys know, I channel Yashua a lot, a lot, a lot. Like if there's anybody I channel the most, it's Yashua. And so every time I channel Yahshua, it's constantly manifest, manifest, manifest. Bring in your reality and visual, visualize your reality. And you can do that. You can bring it into action. Um, and that's just something that has been told to me over and over and over again. Like you were just saying, Taylor, it's, you know, you, if you see these visions, we're just waiting for that little tower moment, the little cute tower card just the detox to action just the detox. yeah <laughs> um purge a little bit Ooh. and if it sounds like if your visions look like they're kind of make-believe just know that satan has created a um what we would call reality and like you said bryce it's boring it's dull it's heavy it's not it's yeah it's it's this never-ending wheel and so we're going into a world where we're not going to have to deal with that anymore. And so things that sound a little outlandish, a little fairy tale-ish, um, can exist in a fourth density positive world. Passion. Yeah. Yes. Passion. We're going into a place of true love as well, not manipulated love. 
Yeah. All, all exposed with that side of things too. Like yeah. even that kind of exposure too. And what yeah. real true divine, I always said this, like, but I never really understood what I was saying back in the day when I used to get this, I was like, love is supposed to feel like do- divine love, like from, from creator. And I feel like that's like what we're about to start to feel a lot of us. Yeah, it's like, like that called. Yeah. You know how dogs love us, your, your animals, your dogs, your cats, and they love you with such pure love and their intentions are pure. And Absolutely. it's like, yes. that's going to be us. I always said dogs were better than humans because they're so loyal and so loving. And I've always, if you, if you spell dog backwards, what do you get? You get God. Yeah. So Aww. it's like, that's the kind of world we're walking into. So anything that is not of love cannot exist. Mm-mm. and will Mm-mm. be brought to light yeah and that's yeah. exciting do you girls want to pull just a couple of cards to as we sign off just to give people <sighs> we'll, we'll, oh, answer people's, we'll answer people's questions tomorrow we'll do a show but we just well now that you mentioned it i'd love to pull cards because you know i'm just Ooh, i'd love if you pulled cards too holy moly there she is looking cute <laughs> with that tower. Yeah, look at that detox coming to me. <laughs> that's coming <laughs> All right. But you what also got get? that ace. Of, that's funny. You got that ace of cups too, because like, man, you're talking about, it's weird. Cause you're talking about dropping in. You're talking about literally the dropping in and then it's the portal of the birth canal. And it's like, plus that cup being, Oh God, I'm getting like too graphic oh. in my head. <laughs> Yo, I wanted to head. share too a vision I had in my, in my salt tub. Okay. Cause I've been getting a lot of visions and I, I pulled, um, you girls know this already, but I pulled a Oracle the other day, water initiation, where it was saying like, you know, uh, manifestations and, uh, visions will come online, uh, by water initiation. So, okay. Again, the bathtub and I saw, um, what we would call the world or earth. And I saw like, uh, this like dull earth, like dull colors. It was kind of just like, almost like a, uh, a black and white movie with maybe some dull colors in there. And it just like went and it kind of just like went through this big, like lavender bubble and came out the other end of the bubble vibrant. She looks great. <laughs> she did look great. It was, it was great. quite. Oh, Oh my God. Oh. Lovers and Oh Yeah. Twin flames. There we go. I'm telling twin you flames. all about the twin flames. Yeah. All about the fucking twin flames. That is the storm. It's the, we are the storm. Yeah. <laughs> the so, yes. Oh, see all about that. Goal here. that Magdalene, that Christ yeah. consciousness. I pulled. Y'all want to see what I pulled? Yeah, go ahead. Our card. Cheers, bro. Got to do our sexy dance. Oh, well, I also, like, with <laughs> that ten of swords, we don't want oh, anyone wow. to be fearful about this process. It's surrendering, yeah. It's a surrender. surrender. It's a great surrender. Mm-hmm. Surrendering isn't always wow. bad, though. Yeah. yeah. And I think that we're going to be more prepared to surrender than our other human counterparts that are not aware of what's actually going on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Ooh. Ooh. So celebration. Feed me the grapes divine. Tell me it's real. So feed me grapes mm-hmm. and tell me it's real card. I need to start using that for now on because that saying is absolutely brilliant. Feed me grapes mm-hmm. and tell me it's real, baby. Yeah. Yep. Or talk tarot to me. I like that one too. <laughs> I don't so, think it scrapes, scrapes hurt my stomach. <laughs> but some, careful with her. Careful with Bryce over here. But guys, oh. something is coming in really, really fast with that card, but we don't know exactly what it is because we do get the moon card. And so that's indicating it's like we probably shouldn't look too, too much into it because things are, you know, underneath the surface that are probably like top secret. Um, let the military do their thing, let the white hats do their thing. But what I would say to the audience is definitely manifest what you want. That's um, card. That's, that's what this card is. That's, that's the John Travolta card. <laughs> Getting what you want. Gosh darn. You gonna post that meme? We need to do our that. own tarot deck and put our own. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh yeah, death. That, I mean, that's like a that. big... That's a new beginning. She's the yeah, end of the old. Get the old. So things will become more clear in the near future. Mm-hmm. And there we get our wonderful card again. Yes, sexy dance. <laughs> Sorry, that was aggressive. <laughs> I, was, I was being too sexy. 
We have all decided I'm, one day I'm we're going like to dance together and do karaoke, right, girls? Oh, you know. <laughs> oh <laughs> right. it's coming back to balance guys. itself. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I love the way of fortune being there too. Yeah, I got, um, so the first card that came out for me was the Empress. So this energy of nurture, love, the earth, but also all of us coming together in this union energy. But I also got strength, which is like, you're strong enough to handle this. Whatever comes forward, you already have it in your inner knowing. Also, and it goes back to the karmic lessons that Bryce was already talking about at the beginning of this and all these lessons and all these things bring us to this now moment too. Like you accumulated so much, you accumulated so much strength, you accumulated so much wisdom because when this happens, whatever this may be, like Steph said, we got the moon. The moon card is like, mm, we don't want to tell you everything and that could be security that could be surprise think about it in all those aspects but it's like when this does happen you guys have already gathered everything you need within yeah. it's all all here yeah. and all yeah. these tools and all these things you've been through brought us to this now moment bringing in bada being the tower bada boom I got something interesting here too. So I, I pulled some more random cards here and I feel like this is kind of explaining kind of the divine feminine right now. The divine feminine right now is balancing herself. Not, not that there's anything wrong with the divine masculine, but it's like there's, there's a balancing act going on and, and something's being well balanced with this card. And then we have the magician card. It's like, we're learning our powers and it, and for the light, it's, it's mm -hmm. powers for the light working in conjunction with God. Um, and the angels and all those beings of our high th that have um, our best interest at hand, you know, in the spirit realm or galactic realm. And look at, we walk away from the devil. Bye. Bye. Good riddance. Devil, your matrix was boring anyway. So. Yeah. So good try. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you next. <laughs> <laughs> i do and, i do and, love that eight of cups that's like a serious walk away that's like eight of yeah, cups like i ain't going like, back to those cups done yeah done. Me, it's done. Like we're walking away from um an old kingdom and walking to a new kingdom and that kingdom is of love that kingdom is of god that kingdom is of everything that we do truly want in our lives because humanity is not evil the true mm -hmm. humans are of the light or of in the made in the image of god and we want to walk toward that light. And so going forward, we are walking away from a kingdom of darkness. Amen. So, well, I shouldn't say amen, should I? <laughs> so it is. So so it is? So no, it, it is. It doesn't. It's, so it is. All right, at the end of the day, we're, we're going to walk away anyways. It's just moving through this. But like, I don't know. I just, I just like want to sit here and I just want everyone to know, like, if you're feeling like garbage can, like, it's okay. If you're having night terrors, it's okay. It's because they can't touch you. Don't worry. Let go. Let God. It's that time, isn't it? Like, let go. Let God. Let go. Let God. And so what I keep hearing, I'm like, what do you mean? Let go. Let God. I don't want to be surprised. I want to know everything. I'm like, like, you're like let me peek. Like, like, tell me now. Y'all know. Y'all know. I'm like, I need an itinerary. Oh yeah. <laughs> of when this. I won't tell anybody. But I'll keep it a secret. Just give me. I just need to make sure I'm my clean. You know. My bras are clean. I've got everything packed away. Just need to make sure it's my bed's made up, and then we'll go. We'll go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yes. Yeah, so, and yes, and I was thinking too, for you guys, like something that I should probably be doing is what we all should be doing is journaling during this time. That's a great way to filter your own emotions, but we're going to need, we're going to need those journals later to teach, teach the new also kids too, kiddos what we went through. People can write books on their experiences um, going forward. You know, I've been saying, I want to write a book my whole life. I never knew what to write about. Well, there you go. Steph. Yeah. It's already written. I see it. All oh, you have to do awesome. is bring it down. Cool. Cool. And, you know, before we do go, I think it's important. I do quickly just touch on this as well. We all have it in ourselves to fight off evil attack. So if like you don't feel confident in it, you do have that power. Yeah. You know, like some of us are getting attacked. Some of us are not, but it's, you know, um, we all have power to um, defeat evil in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've had to, like, I, like, call it a source bomb. Sometimes I'll pull down so much light, I pretend it's filling up my house, and it's just like, <sighs> it's pretty sick. <laughs> well, I sent the girl oh, that picture. Now, I, as I said, I have been attacked my whole life, like, violently attacked physically. 
Um, and I'll do the black and white. So this was probably about a year ago. I woke up with this. Which is yeah. nice. Yeah. That's, that's on the great. side of my torso. And I literally laughed about it. Yeah. Like I literally laughed about it. That's it the best hurt you like can hell, do. but I like that's laughed. the best yeah. you can do. I was right. like, whoa, they wanted something. The um, laughter is the best weapon you can use against this. Yeah. Just laugh it off. And if laugh you get at scared, it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if you do get scared or something like that, what what how can you shift and alchemize that? When I talk about alchemy, I talk about literally like you talk about laughter. That's the biggest form of alchemy I yes. can even imagine going from fear to laughing. So put something on that makes you laugh or if you have to, it's, it's okay to use an external tool, but like, can you put yourself in that place where you feel joy again? It's kind of like what going full circle again, going what Terry said, like he was like, I have love and friendships shifting to that energy also shifts away fear. And, and, and you can't be touched, and that's why they're effing with you. I just yeah. want to affirm that. I mean, yeah, too. that's probably, I don't know if y'all can see that on my back. That was like a minor yeah. one. It was minor. And I was yeah. like, girls, look, they tried. <laughs> they tried. Yeah, yeah. They, um, can't, they can only do so much, but they can't, first of all, they can't take your soul. No. They, they can only go so far to harm you physically, yeah. but you have the power to get rid of that. Yeah. We all have that power. And um, I feel like the biggest weapon I was told while channeling Yahshua, like I do on a daily basis, is um, he said laughter is the, the, the biggest weapon right now. It, it, and everyone can do it. It's easy to do. And if you need something to laugh at, just as long as the lights are on, just resort back to our last video. At 3333. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes will even like, if I just like feel like if I feel something, cause I'm really like, I know a lot of people are energy. Like also I can see, but like, I know a lot of people feel things too. Like I just have sage spray and I'm just like anything that's not for my highest good must leave now. Like, just like, you know, say it. The funny thing yeah. is, like, I get attacked a lot at night, but I actually feel like my house is really good. Like I feel like, yeah, my yeah. House is, yeah. and, and if it, like, I can, I've done this. This is not my first radio. So it's the astral world. Yeah. I'm like, just off like you know it, it's 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 um actually though I, I won't get into details but the other night i was really pissy should i tell and so i told a certain guide of mine or protector of mine to go away and then i woke up with blood in my mouth again i was like oh i'm sorry i didn't mean come it. back come <laughs> back <laughs> I <need> you. <laughs> so all right ladies so i know that was an impromptu video guys we just had some stuff we wanted to put out there and tomorrow we're going to be filming your questions we're going to be answering your questions tomorrow so it'll be all about you guys tomorrow um i did put a post up on the community tab i know some people have already asked some questions so if you haven't already go put your questions there and we'll get through all of them tomorrow but it'll be aired on friday morning for you guys because i gotta edit and stuff and that takes a hot second so all right ladies so all you guys listening, I hope you're having a wonderful evening. It's the evening now. Hopefully, I'll get this up tonight. We'll see how long it takes for me to process this. But um, if not, it'll be up on Thursday morning. So, all right, ladies. Love you both. Love you guys watching. Love and we'll you. talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.